Hi there, this is Kush from creativepadphotography.com and welcome back to the Photoshop tutorial for beginners video series. Today we are on part 8 and we'll be learning about a tool called Selective Color which is a part of the adjustments tools that we are on since part 7. So let's dive into it. I'm going to open this image with a bird here. I've put this image in the description of this video. You can access this so that you can work along with me. Now, I'm just going to make a duplicate of this layer that we don't touch the original. Right, so let's dive into this tool. So how you can access this tool is from this adjustments icon here, the circular thing, and at the bottom you'll see this selective color tool. So just pick that up. And that's the tool that you're gonna see here. So uh, selective color is something which is very, very similar to hue saturation, which we covered in part seven. And to be frank, I wouldn't have made this video because Every time I need to change or isolate a color, I usually go to hue saturation. It's just a quicker and a much more convenient way to do things. Now, the only reason I've made this video is because selective color also does something which hue saturation does not, which I'm gonna show you uh, later on uh, with the next two images that we're gonna look at. But right now, just to demonstrate to you how this tool works, I'm just gonna show you. So you'll find it that it's almost exactly uh, similar to hue saturation. Right, so what it does is you can select your particular color from the drop down menu here. So let's say if we wanted uh, to add a bit of a red to these yellows and not disturb the image. So what you can do is select yellows and then you see this magenta option. So you can add the hue of different colors or you can add different colors uh, inside the color that you've chosen. So we, we wanna make target yellows and turn them reddish. So I'm gonna select this and I'm just gonna push the magenta slider up and you can see we're getting a nice or reddish yellow now instead of the pure yellow that we uh, had All right so similarly you can do this for other colors so i'm guessing let's say probably this flower here in the bokeh this probably is magenta so you can see so i can play around with it i can you know let's say maybe decrease its intensity so if you remember from part seven what we would have done in hue saturation, hue saturation is gone to magenta and turn down the saturation if I'm doing this. So it's pretty similar uh, to what we did or I can increase it like this, right? So you can just experiment with uh, all these tools, add, you know, change the, basically you're just changing how the color looks, which is what we did with um, hue saturation. So if I just close this down, so you can just, if you drag something to the bin here, the, you know, the effect of that tool goes away. So I'm just going to show you that the same thing could have been done by hue saturation. So I can go to yellows and I can just play around with the hue. And if I just push it here, you can see it's added a bit of the red. And so it's done the same thing, right? So my suggestion to you would be that whenever you are, whenever you want to isolate colors and play around with them, the tool to really go for is hue saturation, right? Uh, one advantage, small advantage of uh, selective color, uh, in my opinion, is maybe you, I think you just get slightly more number of colors here as compared to hue saturation but what I've, from what I've seen uh, it's mainly going to be the main reds, yellows, greens that you're going to be changing and those are available in hue saturation. So I won't really advise you to use selective color for uh, to change and isolate a color. So what do I personally use uh, selective color for? We're going to see it actually in the next image. So I'm going to open uh, this image here which is like a studio kind of a shot and I use this particular tool for these kind of images so we've got kind of an underexposed shot here and what I'm going to quickly first of all do is I'm just going to duplicate this and just to correct the exposure I'm just going to quickly dive into camera raw filter which we saw in the in part one you can do it a lot of other ways too so I'm just going to select camera raw filter I'm just going to raise the exposure a bit Okay, probably that is fine. It's a bit of shadows. Yeah, so that's about it. Maybe just add a bit of contrast. Okay, so that's fine. Right, so we get our original. Now the problem with a lot of times which I face with backdrops is, uh, and especially if you you know, if you don't have a proper studio setup, uh, a lot of times you'll face the problem of having these, the texture of the, drive, uh, of the backdrop being shown in your uh, images. So selective color is a great tool to correct this, right? So how you can 
do this is if you go to selective color and you select that the main advantage it has over any other tool is that you get these three options too whites neutrals and blacks so you can actually just like you played and isolated with the normal colors you can actually do that with whites and blacks too so if i select black here right and black inside it has this option black so if i raise this what it's going to do is basically it's going to only affect the the blacks in the image and it's going to make them darker like this Right, so you can see we have effectively got rid of those uh, textures. Of course, uh, since a lot of this image is into shadows, I was just using one studio light just to create a more dramatic effect. So that's, but that's not a problem. Certain parts of this person have become dark because we've done this, but just like we did before, uh, what you can do is I can come back to my original, which is this layer underneath. So if I just hide the effect of selective color, right? So we can just make a copy of this. And let me just tell you uh, straight away right now, because I know what happens in YouTube is that people start, uh, you know, pointing out, they're pretty quick to point out whenever something inaccurate is done. So as I told you in part seven, this is not the way uh, you do things. So we'll be in the next few videos, probably after the next two or three videos, I'll be teaching you the concept of layer masking, which we haven't learned, which is a very important concept. And once you know that, um, the job with, that we're going to do uh, with the eraser tool soon, like we did in part seven, will be uh, much more easier to do uh, than this. But right now, since we haven't learned layer masking, this is a beginner's tutorial. I'm just going to show you how you can keep the effect only on the backdrop. So I've just created a duplicate from the original, put it on top of the selective color tool. So now we have the, our original on top and the selective color effect on the bottom. And I'm just going to take an eraser. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase these parts here. So what it's going to do is going to reveal it from the selective color affected one which corrected the backdrop. So I'm basically only only going to run this on the uh, backdrop so that we can get our effect. So how I can do this and I don't want to work at full opacity by default, your eraser is going to be at 100% opacity, I'm just going to slowly add the effect so that it doesn't absolutely turn black and then you have your normal shades here. So I'm just going to turn the opacity down a bit for the eraser. And then what I can do is I can just start to paint this on this area just to get rid of the texture on the backdrop and probably decrease it a bit more just i don't mind if it slightly shows because it adds a bit of depth to the shot you can uh, it doesn't look too fake because you can see that the hand is resting on something maybe just run it a bit around here and of course, I've not done a great jo job at this because I'm not showing you this through layer masking. So once you understand layer masking and we start using it here, uh, we can do a much better job. But you can see if I hide this, now we've got back uh, the lighting on this area and we've just been able to correct this part. So we've got rid of those textures. And now this looks like a much more professional shot, right? So that's uh, the area I can probably use it. Let's say we can also probably try this, uh, you know, removing this particular thing, I can always probably crop it out. This is just the original that I was showing you. Normally, I always start with cropping the shot. But let's say, if you want to just get rid of this again, we can just paint it here because blacks have uh, turned this down. Right. So, so you can see, we kind of got rid of that also. And just a bit here. Right, so let me show you the same concept with uh, another image. And this time we'll see a white backdrop image. So again, we have this studio light. Again, this is the original. So you're gonna have, you're gonna see all these problems sometimes. So especially where people are standing, if you don't have a proper backdrop and a set setup, it usually results in these wrinkles. So again, now our job is very easy. All we have to do is just select selective coloring and This time we'll be selecting the white option. So I'm going to go here and select white. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn down the blacks here. So if I do that, what you'll see is that the, the blackiness in this part here in the texture is going to go away. So the wrinkles will be seen less. So just keep an eye on this when I dra drag this back. So you can see it's almost uh, disappeared. We still have some wrinkles. So what you can do in this case is now I have exhausted my slider, right? So another thing you can do is you can just duplicate this selective color. So it's going to double the effect of that. 
And once I do that, you can see that it's completely gone now. Now the problem, of course, if you already noticed is that because of what we've done here, um, there is some effect on our uh, model here, but that is not a problem. Just like the way I showed you how to correct this image, you can again put it on top and use your eraser or as I'll show you later on, you can mask this and it's gonna absolutely have no effect. Why? Because these textures were down here. And so even if I, let's say, were to use an eraser right now, most of that will be coming on the body, which is nowhere close to this part. So everything else was already white and we're just gonna leave this part. So it's gonna be absolutely fine. But we've got rid of the wrinkles uh, in the backdrop very, very effectively in a very easy way, just by targeting the white color. So this is primarily where I use uh, selective color. Another place where you can, I'm just gonna quickly show you that as a bonus, where a lot of people use selective color, though you can use hue saturation also, is for skin tones. So normally skin is recognized by Photoshop as red or yellow, so you can just play around so if, I get a, if I wanna give her a more tan look in this. So I can probably turn the black on red slightly on the higher side, so you can see her skin tone becomes a bit tan, or if I wanna just pale it a bit, I can turn the other way. So this is used a lot for portraits too. So, but you could you could have done the same thing with hue saturation, select red, play around with your saturation and the lightness slider, you're gonna get the same result, right? So specifically, I use selective color mainly for specific problems like backdrop wrinkles and other stuff. Otherwise, I'm for color corrections or color change of hue, I'm usually using the hue saturation slider, right? So I hope you like this video. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. We will we'll be looking at another adjustment tool. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye for now.